You never know. Um, this, ain't, this, this is not the establishment you want to open. You know, this is Bob Millet's spot. He's good. He's good people. Yeah. Oh. Hello. What the fuck? Hello. Welcome. Me with my haircut. Perfect. Oh, God. Yes. I can see what Stacy was talking about now. What do you mean? When was the last cut you had? I mean, it ain't that, it ain't that long. You can tell it ain't been that long ago, you know? It's not about the length. If it's about the design. Bro, you haven't got hair, fam. Yes. That is true. There is a story behind like that, a fake which beard. I will tell you later. But you give me a fake beard. You've got like Where a mask to pretend to be a beard. Oh, you do not want to see what's under here. Why anyway, not? we will begin. Can your friends take a seat, please? Okay. I need sure. the room. Oh, okay. Please. All right. All right. This is fine, right? I will take a seat. You'd like to tell your wife to sit down somewhere over there. My wife? Wife. What the? Oh, oh, girlfriend, sorry. Okay. Partner. Partner. Anyway, follow me. <laughs> so what is your name, sir? Tommy. Tommy T. Tommy. You can call me it's the barber right here, for now. You're Wonderful. the barber. I've heard all about these cards. Stacy's been telling me a lot about them. <laughs> if you'd like to take a seat on one of these, we can begin. Okay. So, so Tommy, tell me a bit about yourself. Who is Tommy T? Who is Tommy? Well, name's Tommy. Tommy Tate. And call me Tommy T. Somebody call me Tiny T. Humongous T. Tom Tom, Thomas, all types of names. But yeah, I flew over here from London because back in London, shit was getting a bit hot, you know? I got here and I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a good boy here. I ain't going to do shit. I'm just going to get along and live life quietly and, and disturb no one. So I started going fishing, you know, doing delivery drives. And I bumped into a bunch of people. And that's now my family. Let's just say life's taken a slight turn recently, you know? Wonderful, Tommy. Getting up to no good. Thank you for sharing me, sharing that with me. I didn't share you. Now, the next question, Tommy, is the important one. Now, this is something that your family may not know. Nobody may know. What? Is your deepest and darkest secret. Something you haven't told anybody. Something that is drilled within your skin. But nobody knows about. Why the fuck would I tell you? I'm your barber, Tommy. Nobody will ever find out. Nobody will ever know. I have thousands upon thousands of dirty little secrets. Including your friend Stasis. But they will never leave my mouth. I need to know this sure? secret, Tommy. I need to know it. I have to know it. To be able to give you the cut of a lifetime. Okay. I'm trying to think, but I've not told anyone. i told a lot of people a lot of stuff, you know. Must be something, Tommy. There's always something. Yeah, I got one. I got one. I got one. Right, it's a bit weird, though, right? So don't judge me. So I like to um, chew bubble gum and scran ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum. You like to chew bubble gum and scrape ass. Scran, scran, like eat. Explain what that means, Tommy. Like eat, man. Oh, you eat your bubble gum instead of chewing it. <laughs> no, no, no. I scran ass, so I eat. I'm confused, Tommy. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I chew bubble gum and eat ass, but I'm all out of bubble gum, you know? So I guess only one okay. thing to do. And that is why you're here with your lady friend. <laughs> Maybe. Wonderful. I will not tell us, Tommy. Your secret is kept with me. <laughs> Thanks, man. 
Okay. <laughs> now, before we do continue with this cut, <laughs> I must share with you one last story. Actually, I've got one more for More's you. I've got one more for you. I've got one more. Oh, fire away. I think I've got commi commitment issues, man. I thought you were going to say chlamydia. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I used detection, man. But I'm pretty sure I got commitment issues. So uh, Can you fix that for me or no? Maybe. My name it's Freddy. Freddy Kramer. Oh. I only come out the shadows once every four months to do certain jobs. One of those is to cut hair. But before this, I was just a little boy. Back in London, just like you, Tommy. Tommy and Freddy through the streets of London. Unfortunately, Tommy, my childhood probably wasn't as enjoyable as yours. My father was a drunk. My father was an alcoholic. And my mother was his dog. What? She would do anything that he said. She would bark your mom was your dad's dog. Metaphorically, yes. Did she wear a leash? And a collar? Metaphorically, yes. Not metaphors, anyway, mind you. There's a lot of metaphors, Tommy. But one of those metaphors was the way that my father treated me. He beat me. Every single day. Would hit me with his belt. Whip me with his slipper. Whatever I did wrong, he would pummel me to the ground. He said pummel. He does say pummel. There was one day though, Tommy. One day on the football pitch. Daddy wanted me to win. It sounded different, right? It was the semi-finals. And I was the one that he wanted to score the final goal. Unfortunately, Tommy, that didn't happen. And Father was very angry at Freddy. Father was very, very angry. We went home and he... He sent me to the kitchen. Told me to lay in the corner. I knew what was coming next, Tommy. That kitchen, that corner, <clears throat> was the area which he would always beat me up upon. But this time it was different. This time, he didn't just have the slipper. He didn't just have the belt. He had much more. He was really carrying have. the knife. I hadn't seen it before, but he told me about it. He said, one day, Freddy, one day. If you were ever to disappoint Daddy, it would come out to play. And it did play, Tommy. Oh, fuck. It played good. Oh, fuck. He inserted it into the left cheek and giggled <laughs> and kept pulling it round to the right-hand side, giggling away, drunk giggles. <laughs> I wept, I cried, and I left. I left the house to never return till ten years later. I went back to see if Daddy was still there. He wasn't at home, so I went to the football pitch and there he was, Tommy. He was there lying on the ground, drunk out of his mind. I grabbed my knife, the knife I carried with me, and went over to Father. Wished him happy birthday. Happy birthday, Father. <laughs> I pulled back his neck. Fucking like hell. I put my knife to his Adam's apple. Go on, Lenny. Go on, John. Let me go. That apple open. Wide fucking. Open, Tommy. <laughs> and all was good. My path was complete. Now, Tommy, you know a little bit about me, and I know a little about you. 
We are connected. I mean, yours is a bit deeper than mine. I feel a bit bad now, you know? Fuck. Deep as a knife can cut. That is correct. So, Tommy, please let can you down. please enter the catalogue and we will pick your hair? Okay. Yo, T, you good? I think so. You've never been better, Tommy. I don't think that's our kid out of a bar bar, mate. Arise, Tommy. Let me see you square in the face. Beautiful. Now stand. Show your friends and your lady friend exactly who the new Tommy T is. No more messing around. No more. Need a jump as well. Hey, what? Need to jump. What do you both think? So you, 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 you spin gave his him hair, a crooked ass hairline? And you made him go sideways with his hair. Great job, man. This is why you're fucking bald. You know that? That's why you're bald. I do not appreciate it. And you have Mommy. no eyebrows. What? You got eyebrows. Now oh, you got eyebrows. I see him. Yeah, but he doesn't. Oh, okay. Fuck. What the fuck is this? You made my beard messy about it, I swear. What the fuck did he do to you? There's something that you have to understand about hair. And is that it is created by your personality, not by style. You, both of you. Well, I can't see his hair anyway because he's covered up. But you are determined by your hair in this city. Your personality acquires more than just style. It's not a choice. It's life. Well, cutting his hair at a fucking 90 degree angle was a choice. <clears throat> I would say that you have no idea what you're talking about. Was a choice. You are here, and I am a specialist. And this is a specialty. I would appreciate you acting upon one speciality. I don't so feel like you, me anymore, you, you man. literally threw Gorilla Glue in his hair and made it go sideways, and you said that specialty? Yes. Ah. Uh. It is Tommy. He has told me his secrets. His dirty, darkest secrets. And that is what? And that is how we have created this. Would you like your haircut too? My man, I'm telling you once again, the only reason you're still alive in this place is because the man in the green and the lady in the white didn't say to shoot you in the face. Respectfully, of course. Why would you want to shoot me in the face? What have I because done to create hostility within you? You t motherfucker, what do not take out an... You, you see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm talking about? I'm from the south. Did you just shoot me? <laughs> oh, sh oh, sh oh. What the fuck? Oh, oh fuck. Okay, 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 okay. Oh. 